a janitor. That's who played a song for Bill Nash after Bill was signed by Mercury Records. The song was called For the Good Times, and Bill recorded it the very next day. So who was the janitor? None other than Chris Christofferson, just one of many music giants in Bill Nash's storied career. Take a look. At the ripe old age of 10, Bill Nash started singing with the Nash family trio. He went on to have great success as a solo artist. Later in his career, Bill, along with his wife Kim, wrote songs for country music legends such as Dolly Parton, Biba McIntyre, and Larry Gatlin. With a career that has spanned seven decades and five major record labels, Bill says family and faith in God are still what matter most. Please welcome to the 700 Club, Bill Nash. Bill, great to have you with us. Thank you, Terry. It's an honor to be on the 700 Club with you, hon. Thank you. Well, you began singing with your mom and with your brother. Your mom, for her, it was more than just fun time with the family singing. She actually had some hopes for the music industry as far as the Nash family trio went, right? That's correct. It was just, we were, uh, my dad was pastoring a little small church in a town called Far, Texas, right on the border of Mexico. We didn't have many members, didn't make much money, but she had a dream. And she got us all the way to New York City to one of the game shows at NBC, got discovered by Gene Rayburn. And the next day we were on network television. It just, it's only God could have done that. <laughs> and we ended up at Columbia Studios there in New York making a demo tape. And six months later, we were back making our first album for Columbia. And that's how I got involved with people like Johnny Cash and Marty Robbins and Roy Acuff, the father of country music. And it all was just had to be a miracle of God. So I, I tell people, don't lose hope and don't lose faith. Keep putting the next foot forward. How did you then get signed with Mercury Records? Well, I was singing in Houston, working my way through college at the University of Houston, and, and a, pro a producer came through town with the Marty Robbins show and heard me sing that night, sent a tape to Jerry Kennedy at Mercury Records, and they sent me a contract in the mail and said, come on down to Nashville, we're going to make you a star. You know, that old thing like Elvis Presley, we're going to make you a star boy. <laughs> so when I got there, my producer, Jerry Kennedy, called uh, made a phone call, you know, the old direct dial tone thing. I mean, the dial deal. Anyway, someone answered and he said, is the janitor there? And apparently he was there and, and he got on the line. He said, come on over. Bill wants to hear your song. Well, in Nashville, the waiters and janitors and all those people are all would-be songwriters. And they all have a hit song. Well, this guy came in, sat down in the chair in front of me, crossed his legs and had holes in the bottom of his hush puppy shoes. And I thought, this guy can't be successful. And it turns out he sang the song for the good times for me. And he couldn't get anybody to record it. And I told him I loved it. And his name was Chris Christofferson. And we became fast friends and have been for life, actually. He has me sing with him most every time I've been to see him in person. And so thank God for that favor. That's a great story. You and your wife, Kim, have been very successful in writing together and, uh, and producing music together. What is that like? I mean, to write, write with your spouse, to work with your spouse like that, I'm sure has its challenges. Well, we've been told that by a lot of songwriters in Nashville. They say, how do you all stand each other, you know, 24 <laughs> seven? And it was like, well, I was 35 and she was 19 when we met. And her mom liked me, but her dad wasn't happy. But mama rules. <laughs> anyway, we ended up getting married, and we just never have had a problem. We've only argued over songs. We've never argued over kids. We've never argued over what our path, our career path was going to be. But it, it turns out that Kimberly is an incredible lyricist. In fact, we wrote a song that Diamond Rio made famous called In God We Still Trust. Mm. And it's been recorded over 50-something times now. And she was the lyricist on that song. Wow. So God sent me not only a beautiful girl, Terry, she was talented and smart. I told her the only decision I ever questioned was me. <laughs> I was the <laughs> only one. But it's been a great ride together. It's just been a wonderful thing to really fall in love with someone sure. that falls in love with you. It's a God thing. That's a dream. You know, it's yes, not, though, that your life has been without some challenges. When your son Billy was only two, the world for both of you came crashing down. What happened and, and how did this impact your faith? 
I, I tell you, the thing is, we weren't even living for the Lord at the time. We were traveling and we were uh, having a great time. We're working the clubs and all of that, which is all I, all I knew was music. But they gave us this news after we had been examined at Texas Children's Hospital, and they said my son had a 50-50 chance to live. I remember those words because they impacted me so incredibly. And I just went black inside. I, I, I just can't even describe the trauma that I went through, and Kimberly as well. But we ended up in, in, at Texas Children's Hospital, and they gave us one shot of chemo. And they said after, the, after that news, she and I held hands in his hospital room. And I thought to myself, I'm not Earl Roberts. I'm not a faith healer. I don't know what else to do but just say a simple prayer. And that's what I did. I said, Jesus, if you'll heal. Oh, I'm, I cry. When I, I still cry, Terry. But I think of it. Jesus, please heal my son. And if you do, I'll tell it everywhere I sing the rest of my life. And, you know, we went home and came back 10 days later to start their protocol. We had that cloud over us all week. Uh, for those 10 days. And, and this time they took his blood work again. That's the first thing they do when they, they're going to treat you for cancer. And, and they took an extra long time and it made us even more angst, have more angst. And when they came back though, the same doctor that gave us the bad news with tears in his eyes came back with tears in his eyes again, but it was great news. He said, we don't know what happened, but his blood has gone normal. And for that word to be a superlative is incredible. I mean, normal? The word the, for his blood was normal. Jesus Christ had healed my son. And we just were exhilarated. We were praising God, thanking God, and those doctors were looking at us. Yeah, we're having a revival meeting right here because we never <laughs> gave up hope. They called it immediate remission. We called it a miracle. Exactly. You had yes, you were in touch with the healer. Well, we have just Thanks. touched the surface of Bill's story. It's all told in his new book called Saint Sinner Singer. It's available nationwide. Bill, thank you so much for being with us. It's an amazing story. You've lived a great life. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And our Champions Kids Camp comes from this experience with Billy so we can teach others about having hope and faith in God. Never give it up because he's there. Amen. Amen.